Hey, hello everyone, and uh, welcome to our Tales and Mocktails program for the Hawaii State Public Library System. My name is Nainoa Mao, and I'm the Executive Director of Friends of the Library of Hawaii. And with us, we have Haley Berkey, and she will be taking us through three different mocktails tonight. Um, summer's heating up, so but aside from running into air conditioning, you can make a few of these cool and refreshing mocktails. Haley has been making mocktails or cocktails also <laughs> for 16 years, and she is a restaurateur, a gastronome, She's a bartender. She's well trained in anything that will keep you keep you satisfied, and um, we are lucky to have her. So, Thanks. without further ado, we will move forward and start with our first cocktail. Uh, mocktail. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> they can be cocktails. It's just uh, hopefully they're as enjoyable. Um, we're going to start with the cocktail that's named A Tale of Two Vegetables. Um, so this is a fun kind of savory cocktail. There's a little bit of spice to it. And um, what you're going to do to start is grab a glass. Um, I recommend a Collins glass or just something tall. Um, so I'm going to lead everybody through this demo of making this alongside with Nainoa. Um, if everybody's can hear us and we're good to go? Okay, perfect. So the first thing you wanna do on your Collins class is take a wedge of citrus. You typically wanna use the citrus that you're using in your drink. So this has lime juice in it. So we're gonna use a lime wedge and um, you're gonna just kind of rub it along the rim of the glass. I'm gonna just do half so you guys can see this but you could easily go all the way around. The one tip that you wanna notice is I'm trying not to get it in the inside of the glass so then you don't get too much salt inside there and then that's going to fall into the drink. You just kind of want it on the outside. And this is a dome of kind of a local salt with some chili powder. The chili powder is optional but if you create a mound on a small plate of your salt and the best way is just to kind of slowly um, push your citrus kind of glaze rim into the salt. And there we go, about half. And that guy's good to go. Pass that over to Nainoa. Thank you. Of course. And then the next thing that we're going to do is kind of talk about muddling. So this drink's gonna have two vegetables muddled. It's gonna have our cucumber and celery. So my recommendation if you're working with cucumbers is to find local Japanese ones. They tend to not be bitter. Um, because these ones are that, we're gonna include the skin. If you couldn't find a Japanese cucumber, I'd recommend not including the skin or at least tasting it and make sure you're not getting that weird waxy bitter flavor. As well as your celery, I would always try a piece before you add it to a drink. If it's really bitter, tone it back a bit from this recipe. And if it's kind of the sweeter type celery, then go with this full half stock that's listed. Um, for the cucumber, I'm gonna show you a pretty garnish, but we're gonna just peel it to use, to add to our tin to muddle, as well as get our garnish ready for the end of the drink. Okay, so sorry, we're gonna need a muddling tin for this. Yes, okay. correct, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we have two parts of our shaking tins. Typically, sometimes one will be a glass, sometimes they'll both be metal. I like to work with the shorter one when I'm building anything because it's easier to work with. And then I'll add my ice to my taller one. Um, for shaking tins, if you didn't have one, um, you can really work with anything. We're gonna feature a HydroFast or a Yeti, it's a fancy one in a little bit. Um, anything you have at home that has some sort of lid will work. Um, the thing that's nice about shaking tins is that you can just easily wash them. Um, any questions on that, we good? Okay, so we'll go ahead and peel. Since this isn't bitter, I'm gonna go ahead and throw that in. It gives it nice color. And I'm just gonna do about a quarter is what I said. When I get down to about this level, 
kind of makes this really pretty piece. I'm going to set that one away for garnish. And then I'll probably do like one or two more strips. Oh, so we're not peeling the whole cucumber. We're peeling strips from the same spot. Correct. Got it. Yep. yep. You could easily just chop and throw it in, but I adore strips of cucumbers as garnish and it feels fancy. So, and then you can just cut this and put it in your salad. It does look really good. Yeah. Pro tip. Um, so once you have your cucumber in, then you're going to add about half a stalk of celery as long as it wasn't too bitter. This is um, going to be split between Noah's and mine. It doesn't really matter, just kind of smaller pieces. Let me give you that. Thank you. And then we're going to add an ounce of lime juice. So I juiced this probably about an hour or two ago. When you're working with citrus, I wouldn't juice more than about 24 hours in advance, like if you're party planning, um, just because it starts to kind of deteriorate and loses kind of that freshness. Um, but a bit ahead of time is totally fine. If you're making at home, just cut your lime, and I would recommend um, investing in some sort of good juicer. It really makes a difference if you're juicing in a big batch. Um, typically one lime to two limes will get you about that ounce depends on how good they are <laughs> Costco limes probably too if you're look, lucky enough to find local limes you probably can get an ounce out of one so we're going to go ahead and add add your citrus into this vegetable because that's what's going to kind of help all those juices come out can you give us a little pointer on um, which side is an ounce? Yeah, yeah, totally. So often jiggers will have two sides, like all of these. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're going to be labeled. So if they're like a bartending brand, they'll often have lines that indicate. But typically your smaller side is going to be an ounce and your larger is going to be two if it's fairly standard. Of course, you can convert to teaspoons if that's all you have at the house. Okay, so an ounce of lime. An ounce? Yeah. yeah. And then if you are willing to go for a bit spicy, which I recommend, um, I'm gonna do two dashes of Tabasco, wine, chili, pepper, water, whatever kind of spice you like. Um, if you're not somebody that can handle heat, maybe start with one and then add another drop. Or if you really love it, three, four. And then I'm going to add a pinch of salt to this. Okay. And this salt already has... That has a little bit of chili powder in it. That's optional. Just kind of makes it seem a little more exciting when you have it on your rim. For that. Mm -hmm. um, so for muddling... It really depends on what you're meddling, how aggressive you need to be. If it's an herb or something light and fluffy, you really don't need to go that crazy. But we're trying to extract all the juice from kind of harder vegetables. So we can go ahead and really muddle and take it out on this. <laughs> um, so you're kind of just trying to bring out all those juices, squish up that cucumber, celery. What are other options for muddlers? I remember when I didn't have one, I would use like the back end of a spoon. <laughs> yeah, any kitchen spoon that you have that's flat, um, that's not like a rounded point that you can kind of squish stuff up. The other option is to throw it in your Nutribullet, throw it in a blender. Um, I had batched some out for the guests here at the bookstore and I used the blender and then strained it. Nice. But that doesn't really make sense for one cocktail or one mocktail. So squish it all up. And once it's kind of nice and juicy, you can probably call it good once you're not hitting those big chunks of celery. And um, this recipe calls for agave. Um, I just like agave as an option. It's better if you're 
diabetic, your body presses a little better, but really any sugar at this point you could add. Um, they're all kind of exchangeable in, in these recipes. Um, the thing to note is something like honey tends to be a little bit sweeter. So just add with caution if you're switching the sugars around. Uh, I think it says seven, five, yeah. So three fourths, this is like 0.75 ounces. So if you're using something like I know it has, you can eyeball it, just don't fill it quite all the way. Mm -hmm. And it is, as you pointed out earlier, tapered. So you have to account for that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you're got me. Thank you. Yep. Um, thank you. So at this point, I'm going to add a little bit of ice, about a scoop. I'll show you guys to this bigger shaking pan. Is that enough? Maybe one more. Yeah. So you're going to combine whatever you're shaking with or put the lid on if you're using a jar. And this will kind of help continue to muddle and aggravate all those vegetables in there. Um, a lot of bartenders make their shakes look so fancy and it really doesn't matter at all it's all style at that point so get crazy if you want if you need the arm workout if not you simply just face up and down is good it looks pretty cool <laughs> so our main point of shaking this is to kind of add a little bit of texture and to kind of chill everything down and continue to muddle versus with an alcohol in there, you're also trying to dilute. So at this point, you have two options. Um, you can just dump, they like to call it a party dump. That's if you don't mind chunks in your drink. It's, that's totally a preference. I'm gonna recommend we strain. If you are using a mason jar, and you don't have a cocktail strainer, something like this, this is called a Hawthorne strainer. If you don't have one of these, if you have anything at your house that's like a thin, um, let's see if they're getting that, any sort of strainer, double strainer, this will work great. We're gonna use both the Hawthorne and the double strainer that will really get all those particles out, but don't stress it if you don't have, yep. Okay. So, just this also kind of helps direct your liquid into your Collins glass. Okay, I have this beautiful green liquid. <laughs> <laughs> And then, I believe the recipe calls for about five ounces of soda. Um, I always recommend soda water that's in glass bottle for a couple of reasons. It's actually recyclable. And um, they often have more carbonation in glass because they can force more bubbles in there. So soda water actually acts as like an acid on the tongue. So if you go to drink like a flat soda, it will taste really sweet. And it's really just the absence of bubbles in there. So um, a high quality su bubbles is always something I recommend, but of course a can is fine too. <laughs> and a plus So um, I'm gonna measure, you don't need to necessarily measure when you're adding soda water, but you never know your glass and how much it's gonna fit and whatnot. So I always like to add about half at least for my first one, so I can kind of see, okay, that's about half, how is it gonna fit? And then for the rest of the group, if you're entertaining, you can just kind of eyeball it. So at this point, I might give it just a touch of a stir, but you wanna be gentle anytime you're stirring something with bubbles, so you don't kind of make it go too fast. Thank you. Yeah. 
I'm gonna just add gonna pour. A touch of ice. This is just the kind of show you guys how I'm gonna utilize this fancy cucumber garnish. I'm gonna add a little bit of ice, still leaving room for my additional two ounces of soda that's gonna go in. But I'm gonna start to layer this in. So you can kind of get this guy going in your glassware a bit and give it a little twirl. Get it to start to go. Then it's kind of already in a bit of a swirl. Hope that made sense to everybody. I'm going to add about another two ounces. Maybe just another piece of ice. And then another little gentle stir just to get that last little bit of soda get that cucumber kind of nicely in there. I gotta say mine is not looking quite as good. Honestly, but I think if it's that happens, happens, you can always, I think it looks pretty just like even folded on top, to be honest, something like that, you know? Looks so, very good, as yeah. long as it tastes good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the last little bit of pizzazz is some fresh garden herbs. So we have some dill and cilantro over here. Is there a reason why we, you might've mentioned it, but why we're putting the soda water in? Um, last. Well, last and then splitting it. Yes, yes. so last is because you never want to shake it with it, with the cocktail just because You'll have an exploded <laughs> shaker on you. Um, and then I like to split it up just to kind of incorporate it easier because you had your mocktail that you kind of, your base that you just shook, add a little bit of salt, soda water, excuse me, mix it slightly and then retop it just so you basically don't want to over aggravate soda water. So it kind of helps you incorporate it a bit better without kind of stirring too vigorously. Like once it's really full, it's sometimes really hard to mess with it. And you're really gonna kind of erupt a lot of those bubbles. And I see yours still has the nice layers as well. So yeah, yeah. That's something. <laughs> <laughs> and then whatever herbs you had, um, you'll see a lot of bartenders like really whack, especially mint kind of just helps bring out the aromatics of those herbs um so it seems like a silly dramatic step but it actually really does make a difference on the nose um so whatever herbs you had and garnish to your liking if you're using hawaiian chili pepper water i'd probably pull out a pepper and put it on top for a splash of red i think that could look really pretty and that's that. Typically, if I have something with salt, I don't serve it with a straw because then you can kind of encourage to incorporate that salt while you're drinking. So drink number one, a tail of two vegetables. Cheers. Mm. Nice little kick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you needed more spice, you can just uh, add another dash or two. So is there a reason why we would use a tall glass for this type of drink? Yeah, just typically things with bubbles tend to be in tall glasses as a general rule. Got it. Yeah. Some of it's for practicality of how things drink. Um, it seems crazy, but the shape of glassware really changes the way our, like, nose and our smells and it all enters the body so that's why wine glass shapes can really affect the flavor um it's worth trying like your favorite beer in two different types of glass and see which one you enjoy or your glass of wine or even mocktails with especially with herbs um because it seems crazy but it actually doesn't <laughs> and um, one other question, at what point, if you were to add extra ingredients, mm -hmm. what, what, at what point would you add those? Like to spike this. <laughs> okay. So I gave some suggestions there of kind of how to tone down 
some of the things in the mocktail and then sub in alcohol. But you would do that when you were sh right before you were shaking. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I believe I recommended this one with tequila or mezcal and probably just toning down that soda water just a touch. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, really kind of earthy, herby with those spirits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, tail splash smash is the next one. We'll get set for that guy. And for this one, you'll need calamansi juice, mint leaves, shiso leaves, coconut water, and honey. Perfect. Okay. So you'll get a new shaker. Ten, ready? I've got and my hydro flask. Hydro flask. And for this one, a lot of people may write this recipe where they would have you muddle again, but I'm going to basically show you what I do to avoid muddling when you're using softer things like mint, um, shiso, basil, anything like that. Sounds like a lot of leaves to throw in this. Tin, it is, but that's because it's a mocktail, not a cocktail. So kind of all the other flavors kind of get cranked up in a mocktail because you don't have the alcohol. Um, so we'll go ahead and pick about 15 mint leaves and a few shiso. We actually don't have shiso today, but if you have it, add it, if not basil. And when I'm working with mint, I often will save the crowns or a few of the crowns. Cocktails are a great utilizer of all these kind of bottom mint leaves that you never know what to do with when you want to use them for a garnish. So you can use all those bottom ones and you can save some of your top crowns for garnish later. So some pretty ones. If there's brown on your mint, probably leave it off, um, starts to kind of get these off oxidized flavors. And it can actually just help happen when it gets too bruised. It's another reason why I don't recommend muddling mint. Okay, I stopped counting in, but <laughs> I think I'm there. <laughs> Picking herbs is kind of therapeutic to me, so I went into a zone there, excuse me. Uh, okay, so this is kind of um, a riff on like a citrus mash. So it's herbs and citrus, so it's very fluid. You can use this for really anything you have at your house. This ended up being lemon, lime, and calamansi because I didn't have quite enough calamansi to make it all happen. Um, really, so any really of any of your hard citruses, which would be like lemon, lemon lime, calamansi, use it. Anything you essentially wouldn't just drink a glass, drink a glass or, of, like eat or like the eat the fruit of, of or more your, hard more your hard citrus. If you wanted to, you wanted to incorporate tangelo, orange, orange anything yes. like that, um, um, I would break it up. And I would break it up and incorporate a hard citrus, citrus as well as that. So like half tangelo, half lime, blend like that. So just so it doesn't get too or sweet alternatively or alternatively turn down sugar. your sugar. So I believe so I'll for, for an ounce. So we're just going to so we're just going to start to go ahead and build this in okay. your shaking your tin, your hydro flask, your, your, your jar, whatever you had at home. Thank you. And then, and then I have I have this is um. Big Island, I think, I think this was like Hua honey, yeah. yeah. I, I always recommend a good honey. We have amazing honey in Hawaii, Hawaii so it adds so much like depth of flavor and can really change it depending on the honey you're using. Uh, I think I just got muted. Um, this, I made a runny honey with. Can you hear me? Okay. okay. Um, the runny honey that I recommend is essentially just a honey that's 
incorporated water so it's a little bit easier to work with. That's, you really don't have to, you can just add honey, but especially sometimes if you add honey and then you shake with ice and the honey didn't really get mixed and you have like stringy, chunky, frozen honey. And so it's good to just do this step ahead of time. Um, shaking it? When I incorporate, no, um, just, I would recommend doing warm water and just in a bowl of some sort, measure out, you know, X amount of honey, a tablespoon, and then double your water, hot water, stir that to incorporate, let it set and cool, and then add it to your cocktail. This, I typically will keep it in the fridge after I've made it, but I think that's just psychological. I think it's still probably stable. Just honey is one of those things that doesn't go bad, but once I've added water, it just seems like I've added stuff to it. So I always keep it in the fridge, but it's actually nice for anything just to have around if you enjoy honey, just to make it into a honey syrup because it makes your life easier to work with. Even like dressings and stuff, I'll keep this at the house to easily incorporate honey into cooking. Um, let's see, so I think a half ounce if you're going straight honey and then about an ounce if you had made a syrup with it. Oops, this has a little thing. There you go, Naya. An ounce of runny honey sounds like a lot, but if you had made the ratio, it should be fine. And especially calamansi is extra, extra tart. Um, so it balances. But again, with any time you're working with fresh things like this, try and taste and be flexible to adjust as needed. So um, coconut water next. You have about four ounces of this. So if you're using a jigger that doesn't have lines, it's most likely your large side twice. Two ounces, yeah. So we're gonna double. This is one of those coconut waters that has the pink color. <laughs> so it makes this look a little um, funny, but if you have, the clear coconut water, it might make the color slightly more vivid in this. And then we're gonna skip the muddling, even though we put a whole bunch of mint, shiso, basil, whatever herbs you ended up putting, but we're gonna do kind of a harder shake and that's gonna really kind of incorporate all those aromatics from those herbs. Everybody can hear me. Adding the ice, I think, I don't think you guys are on that one. So yeah, again, ice, then just combine and just a little bit firmer of a shake than we did last time. Okay. Mm. And again, depending on your strainer situation, it doesn't really matter. If you wanna do a party dump, you just dump this all right into your glass, but you would have some big chunks of mint in there if you don't mind navigating them while you drink. Um, if you wanna strain, this is a really pretty glass. <laughs> this is kind of a rocks glass. Um, I think the photo I had a stem glass, but really doesn't matter for, for this one. There's no bubbles added, just whatever glass you enjoy drinking out of, I recommend. Um, I'm gonna skip the double strain for this one because for me, little bits of mint don't bother me at all. So really, again, what you prefer. I'd rather hit a little piece of mint than a chunk of cucumber or celery, but the style preferencing. Um, but we will use a chopped corn strainer for this guy. If it this time it's kind of the pink looks okay. Yeah. Otherwise it would be clear. Yeah. With you maybe would be able to see the green color a bit more. And then very simple, just Carefully add ice. I'm not adding anything else other than garnish, so you can hear me. Uh, 
How about now? Okay. Okay. Yeah. No. And so we've strained, and we're just going to garnish this guy. I had pre-cut some calamon seeds and kind of popped those seeds out. Calamon seeds are sometimes a pain to work with. Um, so I'm going to just drop a few in, and there you go. Yep. And then again, those kind of mint crown that you kept, you can kind of give them a little tap, 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 and add them to your glass. I'll probably poke one of those column seeds down. <laughs> a big stock here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Usually, you want to trim your herb to where. It's getting close to your nose, but not going up your nose. Mm. <laughs> Depending on your <laughs> so, That's great. Yeah, tail splash smash. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Mm. Yeah. That's good. With this one, because it has those fresh herbs that are like pretty delicate, I wouldn't really make it ahead of time. For a party planning. The cucumber celery could probably last the day. Um, for example, I had made some of this just to bring over to the bookstore. And by the time we got here, kind of changed. Turned a little brown. brown. Yeah. 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 So this was this is one of the small group of entertaining where you could just make to order. But it kind of tastes like a mojito to me. So yeah. I think adding a little rum. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good, good place to go. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Everybody have a moment to enjoy that. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get set for the last drink. Um, I know and I are going to talk about making this in a large format as if we were planning a party for everybody. Now that we can kind of safely do those. Mm -hmm. um, but the recipe that you all should have is just for an individual drink. And I'll try to remember to explain as I go what I'm doing differently as a group versus one drink. So we're going to make it in a punch bowl. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm looking forward to these parties again. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know how many people we can have now, but it's just great to be able to see other people without masks on. That's a beautiful chunk of ice. Yes. So this is a big punch block. <laughs> Where would you get ice like this? <laughs> so I actually own a craft ice company. So we make right. clear ice for mm -hmm. bars, restaurants, and we sell punch blocks. But if you didn't want to buy it, um, you could just freeze any large mold, anything they have at the silicone, like um, a cake, what do you call it? Like a bunt cake mold, anything oh, okay. that's easy to peel to... off mm -hmm. would be ideal. Um, metal isn't ideal because then you really have to like defrost it quite a bit to be able to get it out. Mm -hmm. um, but this is so clear. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but if you didn't do clear, another good tip is to freeze something that's flavored. So like this has oh, lemon fine. and strawberries. So maybe a little lemon water with some strawberries floating in it. And that way, as it melts, it's not diluting your punch a ton. Mm -hmm. So this is nice because this will melt slow, it's a larger dense piece of ice. Or alternatively, I'd recommend freezing something that flavor will kind of enhance the punch as it melts. It's a really good tip. Yeah. And then you can kind of set it and forget it and not be super stressed while you're trying to entertain. So <laughs> True. Punches are a good, good thing. So for this, we need two ounces of strawberry puree, half an ounce of lemon juice, half an ounce of champagne vinegar, or uh, you could substitute an apple cider or white wine vinegar, 
an ounce of cane sugar syrup, and one to two ounces of soda water. And what should they be doing now to prepare if they're not making a punch bowl? So if you're not making a punch bowl, which I'm assuming <laughs> this is enough for 20, <laughs> um, go ahead and um, ch chop your strawberries out of a rough chop. Um, it says about two ounces puree. So that's, um, I think I put a note about how many of the strawberries that was. I think it was like uh, four medium strawberries, I believe. Uh, where is that? Four medium strawberries. Yeah. Yep. So four medium strawberries, chop them small. It, or you could have made a puree in advance. So I use a hand blender to make this, just chopped it, put a splash of water, and then I cheesecloth to strain to kind of get those strawberry seeds out. But that's a step that's not necessary. <laughs> like you can survive and it will still be delicious if you have those little strawberry seeds. Mm -hmm. So um, if you're making it individually, you could also use a hand mixer. Like if you were doing even one probably would be okay or an, a bullet and a lot of people use those. Mm -hmm. It's probably enough volume. You might just lose some strawberry goodness in those blender wheels and stuff. So you might need five strawberries to really yield that two ounce. Okay. Um, but if not, you could muddle and just really, really smush them up to try to extract that juice. Okay. Um, then if you're making it home, you're basically going to add all the ingredients and shake except for the soda water. Oh, okay. Does that make sense? All of the ingredients, yeah. well, except we'll add, for those. So. As we add, you can add them to your shaker. So I'm going to start with this strawberry puree, and you can add that in tight to your Ninoa. You could probably do the strawberry a few days in advance if you really wanted. I would probably try to keep it to the day before. These ones actually have a oh. way to open, so they really help. Fancy. Yeah. Uh, it's like goody goody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I'm going to add some bits in here. We're gonna add our <laughs> lemon juice <laughs> at home. It's a half ounce to your shaker. A half ounce, and okay. This is this recipe is using both lemon and champagne vinegar as its acid. So, if you've noticed that most of the recipes are equal or a little less sugar than there is acid added. The pretty good rule of thumb when you're making most drinks, like if you add an ounce of something that's an acid, a citrus, a vinegar, you're adding about equal parts or just under of your sweetener. Mm, okay. Strawberries tend to be pretty acidic too. So taste as you go with something like this. I'm gonna start to slowly incorporate um, champagne vinegar. And I know if you wanna add that. Sure, all of it's it? All of it, it's okay. 10 ounces of that and 10 ounces of the lemon. But at home, you're only going to do half an ounce. Yeah. So basically, this is very strawberries that were going bad, you could look up a quick recipe for a shrub. You're basically going to be adding the sugar, strawberries, and vinegars, and that would help preserve them, and then you could worry about making this later. Hmm. I've never heard of a shrub. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're not that common. Um, it's an old technique that's being brought back in modern times. It was okay. a way of preserving Typically, you'll see citrus, but really you could make them with anything, hmm. any fruit, I guess. I guess vegetables too. But. Uh, 
oil. And then we're gonna add some sugar. This is all that we need, Manu. It is one ounce of cane sugar. Sometimes on recipes, I'll see demerara. Um, it's basically more raw. Okay. I prefer it flavor-wise to um, white sugar. However, it's gonna mute the color of this punch a little bit. So if you really love the vivid, use white sugar. Hmm. Yeah. And where do you get, so you can just buy cane sugar syrup? Yeah. yeah. Okay. No, this is cane sugar syrup that I made. Okay. Um, again, it's just like the honey where you'd want to add equal parts hot water to your, your cane sugar. Mm -hmm. And that would produce a one-to-one -one ratio syrup. Okay. So often on cocktail recipes, it will say two to one or one to one. That means your water to your base sugar equal parts or double. So they might say a rich simple syrup that may be like thicker. That's typically two parts of the sugar. That's something you would prepare in advance. If you have time, if not, just, just put, stir, sugar in. put sugar in and <laughs> stir it up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we'll kind of stir it in pork, right? To be honest, you could have done all of this like in something easier to stir, shook it up and then done it. Mm. But I just was doing it like this for mm -hmm. everybody's sake. Yeah. <laughs> so if you want to continue to stir that a little bit. Okay. And then There's two options for our party application. If you knew everybody was going to enjoy the, the punch relatively soon, like it was a welcome drink, I would probably go ahead and incorporate the soda water you want gently and it just be done. If it's something that's going to set out for a long time, I may leave the soda water on the side with like a little sign that says top with soda water or something mm. like that. Um, just so the bubbles stay fresher. And what does gently mean? Um, for adding this in gently, mm -hmm. just you don't want to, yeah, especially with something like strawberries or texture, if you stir it really vigorously, you may get bubbles. We might have a volcano on our hand. Okay. So just very softly. Okay. And. Make sure we didn't miss any for everybody doing it at home. Yeah. Oh, if you were doing this punch and you wanted it a cakey friendly party, but adults and everybody's drinking, I'd leave the alcohol on the side and have a recommendation or have some sort of measurement or they can just splash in the mouth <laughs> they want. <laughs> but then everybody can enjoy this. Mm -hmm. It's a nice way to just make sure everybody feels included in your party. Yeah. If your punch is isn't nice. alcoholic, um, that way, for whatever reason anybody's not drinking or they don't want to drink that much, they can adjust to their comfort level. Mm -hmm. um, so that looks pretty good. I believe it's about one to two ounces of soda for an order. So we did about 20, so we would want to add about 20. So let's see what we're at. This is 25. So let's just plan to get the majority of that in. That would just go slow. Okay. And open it slowly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it traveled with me. Right now, so. <laughs> okay. Yep. So that slowly? Yeah. Okay. That looks good. And then I would probably slowly start to. If you feel nervous, maybe give it a minute, but it, it looks okay right now. Okay. I'm curious what happened, but I won't <laughs> try it. <laughs> so. The one thing I wanted to show everybody at home that's um, making their individual strawberry tails forever 
is um, another great thing to grab is a peel of the same type that we use for the cucumbers. There's residual cucumber there. <laughs> <laughs> for your citrus peels. So I'm sure you've all seen every bartender these days peeling a peel and squeezing it over your drink. Um, there's all these like delicious oils in your citrus skin. So I'd recommend washing your citrus always before you do this, even before you juice, to be honest, I always will wash. And then for peels, it's good to find one that doesn't have a lot of like bubbles or hard parts, but you can usually make it work with whatever. And you're just going to peel a nice piece of lemon and you're gonna express that, which I'll show you what that means over your drink. And we'll do this over our glass okay. as well. You wanna practice doing that? Sure. Thank you. Yeah. And then I have something that looks like this. Really what makes them look extra fancy is cutting the edges. So you could use a cutting board and cutting them, or if you have kitchen shears or something, something like this. However wide or skinny you like it, something like that, and then you look professional. Wow. Yeah, yeah. But my trick is to use this one to squeeze and then this one to garnish because you'll get a little more oil out of this one that you haven't. Mm, okay. And if you didn't want to leave a pile of these out for guests to add, you could squeeze some over this and it would still give some of that delicious lemon oil. Mm. And I cut these strawberries to kind of look like hearts, but you don't have to, you can just slice them up. So we'll just plop some of these around and have them as fruity. If they're not in your punch, you can just put one or two around your cocktail glass. Have a nice lot more. Cute. Huh? No. <laughs> you could easily squeeze this and leave them floating around. So lemon wedges, lemon peels. Squeezing it, you twisted it. Um, I'll show you the expressing in just a minute, but okay. I'll have you serve mm -hmm. our punch glasses at, if you don't mind. Okay. You could have ice out if you wanted. Just going to have some lemon meals in here. Just so this has some bright colors. Perfect. Nice. I think go ahead and go all the way up. All the way. Yep. Okay. I'm not gonna put ice in ours because I know it's nice. <laughs> cool, you have but if that's each to your mm -hmm. own preference. Okay. So for expressing, let's put this in a good spot for everybody. You just wanna squeeze the pour, the skin side down over your glass and just squeeze. And all those kind of cell walls break on that citrus skin and all that oil goes out over your drink. Mm. And that's a great tip for anything. Like honestly, soda water with this, it's just, it's the most beautiful lemon water all this mm. all sudden. And then this pretty one, because I've kind of, you know, squished it around. I'll just set that in as garnish. Wow. So there we go. Okay. Chin chin. Cheers, everybody. Yeah. I can taste it. The lemon. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that you so quite it. a bit. <laughs> now, tasting this now, I feel like it probably needs a bit more soda water. So, oh, always okay. good to taste, you know, before you're hosting and tweak. Yeah. But this is a really nice uh, way to kind of have a hands off approach to your party and just let people help themselves they can also help themselves to additional ingredients yeah. <laughs> if they would like them but uh what additional ingredients would you, would you put in um i believe i recommend this if any clear spirit so it, this is a great option to have people kind of add their spirit of choice i'd probably put a vodka a rum out even a gin or tequila could work mm. and this is great with like 
other seasonal fruit. Mango would be good in there. You can mix it with the strawberry or just use tropical fruit. So it's pretty fluid as far as what you can substitute in. Just think about strawberries are a bit more tart, so the sugar is probably a little higher using a sweeter fruit, maybe toned down the sugar. Mm -hmm. oh, great. Just in time for 4th of July. Yeah. Um, were there any questions? Yes, hi, Nino and Haley. Uh, we have a few questions. The first question is from Val, and it's um, about the first drink, a tale of two vegetables. Um, she missed how you prepare the cucumbers. Could you explain that? Yeah, so you can chop the cucumbers and throw them in your shaking tin and you're muddling them, or you can strip them how we did, which is using the vegetable peeler just to have thin ribbons that we added to the shake shaker tin and then metal. And, and what we did was we uh, stripped them in the same spot. So yes. you're not peeling yes. the whole cucumber, yeah. you're just uh, peeling in the same place same to make like strips. Cucumber yeah. like this, and then you're going to make a salad with that tonight. <laughs> 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 or just eat it while Don't you're waste. doing yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, our next question is from Veronica. Um, Haley, where do you get your ideas for your mocktails and what is your favorite? So I was the owner of the Nook Neighborhood Bistro. We recently closed, but I always had a large mocktail program for, for our guests mainly, and also just to encourage healthy habits of our staff. We were really known for our brunch, and so encouraging healthy nighttime activities to make sure everybody's always on time. And I just think it's a good thing for any food and beverage establishment to have interesting drinks and I give them as much care and attention uh, as your alcohol because people drink for a variety of different reasons and they shouldn't ever feel judged and I personally drink alcohol but often I don't feel like it yeah. or just want one um, so I've had a lot of time working through mocktail ideas but mainly making them for menus for the restaurant and inspiration. These were kind of all just like sun, fun summary type ideas, but I really love trying to make a mocktail like a cocktail, like have just as many layers or mm -hmm. a riff on a classic cocktail and how to pull out those kind of flavors with alcohol. I really like how these have very few ingredients really. Yeah. Um, and it was, I appreciated that you mentioned that to get the flavors out of a mocktail, you really need more of each ingredient. Yeah, yeah, definitely like kick up those flavors, like vinegar in it. You probably, if maybe it's slightly too aggressive if there was a lot of alcohol um, mm. in, in equal parts, so you might have to tweak a bit. Okay. Another splash of soda probably will fix that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, we have uh, another question. Um, this person wants to know where to find or purchase cham champagne vinegar. Um, it's more and more common today. This was from Whole Foods, but most specialty markets will have it. Um, if not, apple cider vinegar or like a high quality white wine will work. I just wouldn't use plain distilled vinegar mm. or rice vinegar can be good in some flavors if you would you use a little bit less if you were going to use like a white wine because isn't champagne a, a lighter type of vinegar yes. yeah mm. yeah definitely um so taste it see how crazy intense it is and then kind of adjust with your sugar and that's all the questions we have for tonight. Okay. Well, thank you everybody for joining us. We hope that you uh, learned something new. And uh, this is a program for the Hawaii State Public Library System. We are so grateful to have Haley here, our expert. She gave us a lot of amazing tips. <laughs> I learned a lot. And um, we hope that you join us again for more virtual programming uh, from the library system. So. The summer reading programs are running until July 31st. And our next program series is running throughout July 
and it is about Pono fishing. So next Wednesday um, on July 7th, you can learn about Pono fishing on Maui, Lanai, and Molokai. These are virtual, so you don't have to be on those islands to join in. Uh, but there are other excuse, <laughs> there are other uh, programs with uh, the other islands later in the month. So tune in. And for now, have a great Fourth of July weekend. Hope you enjoy some of these mocktails then, and stay cool.